Hello everyone. Hello everyone. This is uh, Chris from My Grand Body, actually uh, streaming from uh, the western coast of uh, France in Normandy, in a town called Granville. And we'll be uh, waiting for a few minutes so that everybody can join us. And then we'll be starting. I hope that you guys are well. Um, you can uh, already comment in the in the chat and let me know where you come from, and maybe you can start from there. So I don't know exactly where you are. Uh, we're going to talk about weather tonight. So uh, today, tonight for me, it's 11 p.m. at the moment in uh, in, in France. Um, so uh, uh, it's been uh, it's been a very hot day in Western Europe today. I hope uh, uh, you guys, wherever you are, are well. And uh, and uh, let's wait uh, another few seconds, and when we we'll, and then we'll be starting. All right. Uh, welcome to our first YouTube live session. Many of you asked for a new session on weather and migraine after the one we held on Facebook a few weeks ago. So we thought today would be a good day as the newest version of Migraine Buddy includes weather, with, uh, weather feature enhancements, and it's just been released both on Android devices and iOS devices. My name is Chris from Migraine Buddy. I'm a Migraine Buddy expert and also a Good Days program coach. Today, we will be together for about 45 minutes to an hour. And for the ones who attended the first session on weather and migraine, you're probably familiar with migraine threshold, weather-related risk factors, and risk mitigation. So please bear with me, with me while I go through this. And then I will show you Migraine Buddy's latest updates on weather, and we'll see how they can help you. And then I will answer your questions. So do not hesitate to write down your questions in the live chat. The moderators might answer some of them while I'll be talking. Otherwise, I will go through them after the presentation. I will try and answer all of your questions. Can you hear me well? Um, please let me know in the chat. There is usually 10 to 15 seconds lag. So do not be surprised if I, if I have delayed uh, reactions. So let me check the live chat right now. Okay, great. All right, so it seems to, to work fine. Let's get started then. So we actually always start with the same statement. The causes of migraine remain somewhat unknown to scientists. But we know that some sensitive brain receptors trigger migraine symptoms when they get upset. And they get upset when they are exposed to too much migraine risk. They can only stand a limited amount of migraine risk. And the amount of risk or risk level is, uh, this amount of risk, risk level, is called the migraine threshold. When the migraine threshold is reached, brain receptors get upset and migraine symptoms appear. Symptoms include prodrome and aura so they can appear up to three days before typical migraine headache symptoms. In order to illustrate this, let's use the following graph. Risk level is in vertical, and time is in horizontal. Risk is in orange here. Migraine, is, uh, migraine threshold is in red. So the risk varies over time, so the level of orange varies. It goes down and then it goes up. Migraine threshold is stable over time, so it is a horizontal red line. And symptoms appear when the risk reaches the migraine threshold at around 9 p.m. on this graph. So for those, for those of you who are joining us right now, I'm Chris from Migraine Buddy, and we've just talked about migraine, th migraine risk and migraine threshold. And now we'll talk about risk factors. We commonly call them trigger, although they do not trigger anything. Upset brain receptors trigger symptoms, but risk factors do not. 
we're exposed to multiple risk factors at once. Associated risk piles up. So when the total risk reaches the migraine threshold, symptoms appear. We're exposed to a number of risk factors every day. They can be related to sleep, to stress, to diet, to hormones, to weather, or to many other things. So let's see how it looks on our graph. So that day I was exposed to four different kinds of risk, four types of risk, related to hormones, to weather changes, to stress, and a dietary trigger, a dietary risk, added sugar. So note that hormones and weather-related risk remain stable from 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. Stress risk decreases and added sugar risk appears at 4 p.m. and quickly increases from there. And they all pile up the same way. So in order to remain free of symptoms, we must stay below the threshold. Remember that the migraine threshold is the risk level that upsets the brain, receptor, uh, the brain receptors that trigger symptoms. So how do we stay below the threshold then? Actually, there are three ways. The first way is to avoid risk exposure. That day I was exposed to, to um, to added sugar. So for instance, if I avoid added sugar at 4 p.m., I stay below the threshold and I don't get symptoms. The second way is to mitigate symptoms. For example, if I spend a bit of time every day to care for my loved ones, and let's say 30 minutes to walk my dog, over time, I will build resistance, I will build resistance to stress. So I will be less affected by stress. On the graph, less risk from stress, and I will stay below the threshold, so no symptoms. And the third and only other way is to raise the threshold with preventive medication. In this case, brain receptors gets, gets, they get, sorry, they get less sensitive to migraine risk and they can tolerate more risk. The threshold is higher, so I don't have symptoms. Talk to your doctor for more information on preventive medication. Let's now have a look at sensitivity. We can have high, medium, or low sensitivity to a given risk factor. High sensitivity means that when I'm exposed, risk raises sharply and quickly reaches the threshold, and then symptoms appear. In this case, we are highly sensitive to weather changes. Weather changes are among the most reported risk factors within migrant body community. We will see in a while how we can track them. Medium sensitivity means that risk level reaches, uh, raises significantly, the, uh, but the threshold is not reached, if we're not exposed to other risk factors. But in case of repeated exposure, risk builds up and may finally reach the threshold, and then symptoms would appear. Now, if we have low sensitivity, symptoms will not appear when we're only exposed to this risk factor. But keep in mind that we are exposed to multiple risks at once. So if we were highly exposed before the weather changed, for example, to hormones and stress, we may end up with symptoms anyway. So now weather-related risk factors. So for those joining us, I'm Chris from Migrant Body. And we've just talked about risk factors and sensitivity and how to stay below the threshold. So let's talk now about weather risk. Most commonly reported weather-related risk factors are temperature, humidity, luminosity, and weather changes. I have found no conclusive research on this, 
but there is a body of corroborating evidence on weather changes. Weather changes are usually measured through atmospheric or barometric pressure variations. It is difficult to avoid weather risk factors, but it's possible to mitigate some of them. So let's go through this. You can mitigate high luminosity with sunglasses or special screen glasses. If you stay home, you can also mitigate temperature and humidity variations with either aircon or heating. Unfortunately, there is not much we can do about air pressure variations. So let's focus on pressure forecast and risk mitigation. So pr pressure variations. To keep it simple, high atmospheric or barometric pressure uh, usually means high clouds and sun. And low barometric pressure usually means low clouds and rain. Weather changes come with drop or rise of barometric pressure. High and strong pressure changes result in similar weather changes. So high and strong uh, uh, pressure drop usually means there's going to be a storm. So depending on where you live, pressure variations can be lower or greater. As a rule of thumb, the greater you get to the, po the sorry, the closer you get to the poles, the more the barometric pressure tends to vary. Example: On this world map drawn by J.T. Taylor, with global data over eight years, each dot being a weather station around the globe, the color code represents the number of days with moderate or high pressure variation per year. Dark blue means zero to thirty days. Dark green is 30 to 60 days. Light green is 60 to 120 days. Yellow is 120 to 150 days. And orange to red is extreme 150 to up to 230 days with moderate or high pressure variation. So each measured day there is taken into account if it has moderate or high pressure variation that day. This sample of weather stations does not cover the whole world, but it gives us a good overview anyway. You see that dark blue dots are in tropical areas, and green to yellow dots tend to be far from the tropics. So the northern part of the US, Canada, northern part of Europe, Russia, Central Asia, northern part of China, and Japan, Korea, in the northern hemisphere. And Argentina, Uruguay, South Chile, South Africa, southern part of Australia and New Zealand in the southern hemisphere. So now if we zoom to North America, you see that Gulf of Mexico area is in dark blue, as well as up to California on the Pacific coast. And then in the north and far away, in the north and far away uh, from, uh, from, from there, from the oceans, the dots are green to yellow to orange. Let's now have a look at this. This is the map of the US. You can see moderate to high pressure variations are much more frequent in northern Texas or Oklahoma than in Houston, for instance, and even more in the northern part of the country. If you live in the US, take time to spot the color where you live. Remember that the lighter the color, the more the number of uh, big pressure variations in, in a typical year. The, the, more, the, num the more the number of days with uh, moderate to high pressure variations in a, in a typical year, on average. It's been, it's been calculated over eight years. OK, so now. Let's have a look at Canada. Frequency is on average higher with relatively low frequency in Vancouver or close to the Great Lakes. Again, let's take time to spot the color in your area. So from, from, what, uh, uh, from all the feedback and uh, all, the, uh, all the studies that we've done, that we've done on this, the more the pressure varies, um, 
the more people with sensitivity to pressure variation uh, tend to be at risk of having migrant symptoms. So now, if you live in Africa, very low daily pressure variations on average, except on the South African coastal regions, where it is significantly higher. If you live in uh, Asia and Europe, very low frequency on the Mediterranean region, the Middle East, South and Southeast Asia, the northern parts of Japan, the southern parts of Japan, and the Korean uh, uh, Peninsula. There again, the northern you go, the more frequent moderate to highly daily pressure variations are. So if we have if you have questions on this we can we can come back to these charts to these charts during the during the question and answer session. Don't worry if you didn't have time to uh, to, to to spot uh, the, the area in which you live. Okay, well, let's let's now zoom on Western Europe. So frequent significant daily pressure variations in general and more towards the North Atlantic, so the North Atlantic coast. Uh, for instance, when I lived in Ireland, I could check more than once the phrase that you can see all four seasons in a day. Okay, so let's now move to uh, Oceania. Low daily pressure variations everywhere, except in south coastal areas of Australia and Tasmania, uh, where high pressure variations are most frequent. And you have the same pattern in New Zealand. So if you live in the south of uh, the southern island, you're much more uh, um, likely to have um, um, high pressure variation, daily high pressure variations uh, uh, than when you live in Auckland in the north northern island. So it doesn't mean that the weather does not change in the blue dot spot. It just means, and 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 this is true for everywhere in the in the world. So it does not means. It does not mean that, the, that there's no change in the blue dot spot. It just means that weather changes are not so frequent and not so quick. So finally, South America with extremely high, uh, extremely frequent, frequent high pressure variations in the south of Argentina, in Chile, in the south of Chile, and in the Falkland, South Georgia, and South Sandwich Islands. So this, these are places where you have a very high number of days in the year with high pressure variations. Okay, so in migrant body, low pressure variation is less than 0.18 inches of mercury or 6 millibar over 24 hours. It is displayed as a green dot in the new pressure forecast overview. So this exactly means that within 24 hours, there is not much than uh, uh, 0.18 inches of mercury of pressure variation. So for instance, if it was uh, 30 uh, at, the, at, at the highest, the highest pressure today was 30 inches of mercury, then to, to, stay, uh, to stay within the, 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 the low pressure variation uh, range, let's say that the lowest cannot be below 29.82 uh, inches of mercury. This is what it means. So now, between 0.18 and 0.3 inches of mercury, or between 6 and 10 millibar variation over 24 hours, you are in moderate pressure variation, an orange dot in the new pressure forecast or review. So, for instance, if you have 1,013 millibar, the lowest that day, the highest that day will be, if, if it is moderate pressure variation, the highest will be between um, 1,019 millibar and 1,023 millibar. And it can happen any time in the day. And now, high pressure variations mean that 
over 24 hour period, the maximum pressure variation is above 0.3 inches of mercury, of mercury or above 10 millibar and a red dot on the new pressure forecast overview. So let's now see how Migraine Buddy's latest update can help. I'm going to switch to my phone screen. There you go. Okay, so on the home screen of the app, you can see the weather uh, pressure variation forecast card. There are seven colored dots. One per day for seven days starting today. Green color means that maximum pressure variation that day is low. Orange for moderate and red for high. So tap uh, on, the, on the orange button to update the forecast and see how the coming days maximum pressure variations is forecast. Today's and tomorrow's forecast are available to everyone as they have always been in the app. No change. MB Plus subscribers also have access to days 3 to 7 pressure variation forecast. Once you have updated the forecast, you can view the graph. So I had already done that today, so I click on view the graph. All right, so just as before, you can see the hourly pressure forecast for today and for tomorrow. I can navigate in this. The scale used to zoom and fit the whole screen, but it was okay. So yeah, so the scale the, the scale for the uh, for the graph used to fit the whole screen. So it was nice to have, but confused many users because it was difficult to see whether the pressure the pressure change uh, was high or was low at a glance. We changed to a fixed scale so that you can easily identify how much pressure is forecast to fluctuate. If I scroll down, so that's for MB Plus subscribers only. You have also a detailed seven day pressure forecast and it's displayed the same way. Many users also asked us to include um, the location on the screen. So that's now done. As you can see on my screen, this is the pressure forecast for Granville, Normandy, France, where I'm currently based. So let's now have a look at the three dots button on the top right hand side corner of the screen. There are a few interesting options here. So you can adjust your location first. Note that my current location displays first. So if I tap on this one, okay. So together with the current weather metrics, so I see I see not only my location, but also the current weather metrics. So the, the actual temperature, the humidity, and the pressure. So it's about 25 degrees right now in Granville, which is exceptionally high. Um, and I can see 65% humidity and 1,017 millibar of pressure. So on Android devices, this used to be accessible before the pressure graph. So now it's just one more click away. On iOS, device, on iOS devices, sorry, it's brand new. It was not available before. So let's now change my location to, let's say, Cape Town in South Africa. All right, so as before, I have my current weather metrics. And if I switch back, if I confirm, sorry, it has updated my two days and seven days pressure forecast. So as you see, the, 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 the weather is pretty different and the forecast is pretty different in Cape Town uh, with a high pressure variation schedule for today and tomorrow and moderate pressure variation in the in the three following days. So you can also adjust 
the units from metric to imperial directly from the weather screen. This is also new. Before you could do it, but you had to go to the, to the settings of the app. So let's have a look at this. So if I change to imperial, sorry. All right, so now I see my uh, pressure is in inches of mercury. And if I go back to my map location, the weather metrics will display in Imperial. So 55 Fahrenheit and 30.15 inches of mercury. Let's confirm this. So this is accessing this is, is new for everyone. And last but not least, you can also set a forecast alert. So you can you, you, you can choose to receive an alert every day on your uh, next two days or next to seven days, next two to seven days uh, uh, forecast. So this was only available on iOS devices so far. So you can now receive a daily weather forecast uh, notification on Android devices as well. It replaces the min-max pressure alert that was before. So it was a nice feature actually, but unfortunately it was not very meaningful as reaching a mix a mean, sorry, uh, a mean or a max pressure is not correlated with how quickly or how strongly pressure varies. So it created a lot of frustration for many of our users, particularly the ones who were switching from iOS to Android devices. So for those of you joining us right now, I'm Chris from Migrant Body, and we've just talked about migraine risk, including weather related and how to mitigate it. And we've also seen how you may be more or less subject to high pressure changes depending on where you live and how to check the barometric pressure, uh, the barometric pressure forecast in the app. So how to measure your exposure to pressure variations? You can obviously use your memory to report weather changes before symptoms. Another way is to use actual weather data. So pressure forecast is in the app and it's everywhere on TV, in the newspapers, and on internet. But you cannot find pressure variations history anywhere. And this is why Migrant Body decided to source this data and include it to Migrant Body Plus. So on the one hand, you will receive monthly weather reports. For your main location, they show you um, they show you the actual pressure variations over the past month together uh, with your attack records. So there are three ways to access these reports in the app. The first way, and I will show you that, you go to you go to your records and and you tap this new button here. So the export icon with the crown, and then you choose your report in the list. So I'm going to show you that. All right, so you choose your report in the list. I can, I can scroll the list and choose my report. And then when I say OK, I will receive my, my, my report as a PDF in an email. So in features, Let's go back to the home screen. Let's go to features. In features in more here, you have advanced reports. So if I click on this one, I also can go and choose my report. And then the third way is to go to reports and to scroll my reports down. And click here at the bottom more insights with advanced reports. And then I can also choose my advanced reports. So advanced reports are not only on weather, they are also on other, on other metrics, uh, uh, but um, an interesting part of them is on weather. So what does it tell you exactly? Um, so before that, just one more note on, on, on advanced report. Uh, when you subscribe to the reports, you receive your first report for the previous month. So for instance, if I subscribe today, I will first receive the July report. As I subscribed before, I have a number of reports already available to me. 
The July reports are going to be sent shortly. So let's switch back. to my slides now here okay okay so this is how the pressure uh, the pressure graph in the weather reports looks like you see the pressure variation graph for your location for a whole month the pink stripe is an attack record so you want to focus on moderate and high pressure changes. Here, we added a red cross for each of them. So for each moderate to high pressure change, there is a red cross. Of course, I will first need to check whether I was at home when these steep changes took place. If I was, having a look at this graph, I can say for sure that I'm not highly sensitive to weather changes. If I were, I would have had an attack each time, and I didn't, because there, there's not one uh, a pink stripe after each red cross. Remember that high sensitivity. Uh, remember the high sensitivity graph. Let, let let me come back to it here. High sensitivity means symptoms for each exposure. So if I come back here, after each big pressure variation, I didn't have symptoms. Actually, I didn't even have symptoms after any of them. So I can say for sure, having a look at this graph, that I'm not highly sensitive. I may be moderately sensitive, but not highly. So again, if I do have an attack after each big variation, then I might be highly sensitive and I, 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 should, uh, I should check previous reports or I should wait and check the next report to come. If I happen not to have an attack after only one big variation, I am definitely not highly sensitive and this is a very good news. And in this case, if I'm not highly sensitive to weather changes, um, all right, let's come back to this. If I wear there would be a pink stripe after each red cross. So after each red cross on this, on this chart, there would be a pink stripe, meaning an attack. Would have an attack each time after, I would have an attack each time there is a big variation. So if you have this, you, uh, you, you might be highly sensitive. It's not 100% sure, but you might. If you don't have this, it's 100% sure you're not highly sensitive. So this, this is important for, for, for the rest. So let's, let's go on. So if I'm not highly sensitive to weather changes, that's quite a good news. In order to check my actual pressure to weather changes before each attack and avoid relying on intuition, we have added to the uh, we have added the, pre the prior sorry the prior 24 hour pressure change information to each attack. So if I switch back to my phone view here, yes, and then I go to my records. Hmm. Hold on a second. Yeah, I go to my records and I select a record. So, as I said, um, once you have confirmed where you were when your attack started, and in this attack I did, but I can reconfirm it anyway. Okay, so let's assume I was in Granville that day. Uh, it's taking a bit of time. Uh, let's try again. Looks my looks my looks like my internet connection is not so good. Hmm. All right. So uh, before I try to do this. 
Actually, <laughs> it displayed moderate here. Mm, no, it looks like it displayed low, actually. All right, so low pressure variation that day. All right, so probably I was not in the same location. So with the new location, I have I had low pressure variation in the 24 hours that came before uh, the attack started in this record. So when you have moderate or high pressure variation in the uh, uh, as a result of this. You can add it to the uh, high pressure to the, to the trigger screen. So if I go to my trigger screen, so I've I've created these uh, these two uh, um, these two tailored triggers. One is moderate, and the other one is high. So if I had moderate or high, I could have selected them and confirmed. So actually, this is the only, only objective way to measure your exposure to pressure variations. And if pressure variations appear consistently in your top three trigger report, you may want to take action. And you can, you can also check your export report as it is automatically added. So remember, I confirm. So you can check your reports. You can, uh, uh, to export your reports, you click on this dot here, on this export report feature. And if you want to check your reports, you go to features, reports, and then you scroll down. To top three triggers. All right. So how can you take action? If you identified with your, your, your monthly weather reports and, uh, uh, the, uh, and, uh, and, and the prior 24 hours uh, feature in, uh, with, 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 each, uh, with each attack, so if you identified that you are highly sensitive to uh, big pressure variations, to moderate pressure variations, then you want to take action. So you definitely want to talk to your doctor and see how to raise your threshold with preventive medication. You might also want to take extreme measures and consider moving closer to the equator. But this is the only way to reduce your exposure. If you're not highly sensitive, then you can mitigate your exposure to other risk factors in order to stay below the threshold. Remember what we saw at the beginning, risk factors pile up. So even if you cannot really uh, mitigate the exposure to, uh, to, to, to weather changes, you can, meet, you can act on the rest. So if in, your, um, if in your pressure forecast, you see that there is going to be a big variation, then you can, you, you, you can act and you can make sure that you mitigate other risks in order to stay below the threshold. This is where pressure forecast is important when you plan ahead. So we decided to purchase seven-day forecast data from our supplier Dark Sky in order to give you more visibility. This can help you um, plan your social activities or, and also avoid risky activities such as long drives with high pressure variations or forecast. And last but not least, we cannot mitigate pressure variations, but as I said, we can mitigate many other risk factors. So when strong weather forecast, uh, when strong weather change, uh, weather changes loom, you do make sure to avoid your di dietary risk factors, uh, stay well hydrated, practice your anti-stress activities, avoid hunger, avoid physical exertion, and wear your, so, uh, your solo glasses and so on. So just one last thing I would like to share with you guys. It's on the pressure 
forecast here, you see that you have an additional two terms. So these are uh, open to suggestion for future development. So do not hesitate to go and, uh, and, and, and select your favorite, f your favorite features for uh, further development. So to give us priorities for uh, developing these things for you guys. All right. Thank you very much. So I will now answer some of your questions. So please keep in mind that there is a 10 to 15 seconds lag after you send your questions and I can so I can read it. Uh, so please bear with me and uh, I will scroll the chat and try to answer as many questions as possible. Important point before I start, uh, check the links in the description and in the pinned comment of this live stream. As a token of appreciation, we would like to offer everyone who's watching this live a special discount of $20 of our uh, of our MB Plus annual subscription and also 20% off any of our Good Days program plans. So we'd just like you to fill in your uh, feedback for this webinar and you'll receive the discount code. Okay, so I'm going to have a look at uh, what the moderators are uh, showing me at the moment so that I can uh, start answering the questions and then I will scroll. Okay, so I have very few migraines in Los Angeles. I had very few migraines in Los Angeles and many migraines in the mountain in South, Southwest Virginia. Yeah, so unfortunately, uh, if I remember well, uh, the Californian coast is, uh, has a very, very low uh, number of uh, high variations um, in a typical year. And Southwest, Southwest Virginia uh, probably has a, a a higher a higher percentage a higher ratio so yeah unfortunately you have a higher risk of uh, of having uh, uh, more days with uh, moderate to high pressure variations when you live in in in, in Virginia uh, and even more maybe in southwest Virginia as in as in California which pressure system tends to cause more migraines ah so actually uh, based on everything that we've observed over the years, it doesn't seem to be so much the pressure system rather than the pressure change. So the change of weather, the weather change. So either when you go from fair to stormy weather or after when you go from stormy weather to fair weather, for instance. And as there is, uh, as many of us have uh, uh, that the first symptoms are either, are either prodrome or aura, there, is, there, there can be actually uh, a number of hours and actually up to three days before, uh, sorry, after the, uh, the, 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 the risk, after the exposure to the risk factor. So in that case, weather change and uh, the typical uh, uh, migraine headache symptoms. Altitude is also a factor for me, i.e. traveling to higher altitude states from lower altitude states. Mm. Okay, so yeah, so this is another one. Actually, the pressure change uh, also varies when you travel from uh, a low altitude to a high altitude or vice versa, because typically in a, uh, the, the higher the altitude, the lower the, the, the atmospheric pressure. This is just a, um, a characteristic of, of our planet. So, uh, um, so when you live in the mountain, the uh, standard altitude, uh, the, the standard uh, pressure tends to be, uh, it's not, it doesn't tend to be, it's, it's lower than uh, uh, when you're at sea level. And it's exactly the same when you, uh, when you take a lift, for instance. So when you take uh, one of these high speed lifts, when you go to uh, uh, up or down a skyscraper, uh, you will have this uh, uh, weird or actually very unpleasant sensation in your ears. And you may actually have uh, uh, symptoms right away. So this is exactly the same. The problem is your changing uh, of uh, uh, the, the change of pressure is very quick. I personally have exactly the same thing when I uh, when I have a congested nose and I, I'm in a plane. So when the plane uh, is about to uh, is, is is descending. I have this, uh, sometimes I have these very, very painful uh, symptoms when I have congested nodes and the, the, the pressure varies in the, in the inner side, uh, in the inner part of the plane. 
Also, I moved to south as I moved south to less variation. It's hotter, which sets off migraine. How do the heat and pressure interact on the migraine? So, unfortunately, these two are separated. As I said, we've we focused on, uh, on 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 weather changes uh, in the last uh, minute, in the last few minutes, because this is the this is the less easy to appreciate. But obviously, for some of us, temperature is also an issue, as well as humidity. And humidity, when combined to uh, to, to weather changes, is even worse. So when you go to uh, to fair and dry weather, to uh, stormy and humid uh, weather, it it can it can exacerbate uh, the uh, um, the symptoms. So in that case, um, as I said before, you have whenever it's possible, obviously, whenever you have the possibility of staying in house, it's you, you can mitigate uh, the temperature with the temperature variations or the hot temperature with air conditioning. You can also mitigate. The, uh, the, 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 the humidity with air conditioning. Air conditioning and heating tend to lower the humidity or at least to stabilize the humidity. So you can stabilize the humidity, you can stabilize the temperature. But it's not good actually on high and, and quick and high changes. So switching from low to high temperature, switching from low to high uh, humidity and vice versa. So as long as you stay in house, you can you can uh, you can monitor this. Obviously, when you uh, when you work outside or, or, or when you when you are outside, it's it's much more difficult. Unfortunately, on weather changes, on pressure changes, whether you are outside or inside, somehow we, we suffer from the pressure changes anyway. Uh, I see another question. Can we get alerts on any days, only on days with moderate or high variation, not every day? Okay, so this is something we have in mind. It's not available right now because we tested it and uh, uh, we have the issue of, okay, so when do we alert you guys? Is it the same day? Is it the day before? Is it in 12 hours? So we tested it with, uh, uh, with a few users with the possibility of changing the uh, how long in advance do I want to be alerted. But the thing is that so far uh, um, changing this metric is a bit overwhelming. So we haven't uh, we haven't selected this uh, yet to include. We, we haven't found uh, uh, um, an un um, a, a very enjoyable experience for this yet. But if you guys uh, uh, are really uh, 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 if you if you really want to have this added in the in the app, I really encourage you guys to go to the uh, to to the to the two tabs I showed you before, so that you can uh, you can suggest it in the in the weather card, and we'll work on your suggestion. And obviously, the uh, the, the 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 most popular suggestion uh, will will give our will get our attention uh, before before the other ones. Another question. If I go to a prior record of an attack that does not show a pressure variation was logged, will it update with the date's pressure variation or will, will it just pick today's? No, it will not. It will definitely, uh, this, this is going to search for two things. It's going to search for the exact date and hour uh, when the record started. And then it's going to look for the location. So if I change the location, if I change the location, for instance, from uh, from Granville to Cape Town, for the, exactly the same day and the same date, uh, same date and same hour of starting the uh, the, the record, obviously the uh, pressure variation, the pressure conditions and pressure, 24-hour pres pressure history will prob must probably be different, and I might have a different uh, input. So the input is based on where and when the record started. I am prescribed somatriptans and as a recovery medication. In your experience, does one recovery medication help with those sensitive to weather pr pressure changes? Mm. Actually, this is a question that I'm not going to answer and uh, I I, I prefer uh, letting you guys uh, talk to your doctor or actually uh, have a look at the chats uh, because 
you you share a lot of experience in the chats, whether in the pressure chats or in the other chats on this. And the link uh, or in the chat. The moderators have included the link to the weather chats in the live chat. So so connect to the chat group and uh, have a look at uh, at, at what users uh, what other users' experience is shared there. So maybe you have the answer of your question. Unfortunately for uh, uh, medication, I cannot answer. And uh, um, so either either check with other users or even better, talk to your doctor about it. Is diving not recommended for people who are prone to migraine? Same for skydiving. So being prone to migraine doesn't mean being sensitive to uh, pressure changes. For me, it is. But uh, I am. I, I, I am not. Uh, I, it, it may be different for every one of us. So I know for a fact that when I have congested nose, I'd rather uh, I'd rather not be uh, um, exposed to uh, big pressure variations. Otherwise, I take uh, I take a preventive medication so that my nose is not congested. In that case, I have no trouble. But again, this is for me only. So. So if you want to talk about medications, talk to your doctor. And if you want to, uh, uh, to check about uh, practices such as, um, such as skydiving or scuba diving, I think you should, one, talk to your doctor, two, uh, talk to your instructor of scuba diving and skydiving, and three, uh, check in the, in the weather chats or other chats of the app for a return of experience of other users. So let me have a look at other questions. So from Baker has, has from Baker, has any research been done with solar, solar and or geoma, uh, geomagnetic changes? Um, okay, so we have, uh, we are actually involved in, uh, in a couple of uh, um, research is on weather at the moment. Um, so it's not uh, one, uh, we have a doctor that solicited us for uh, uh, luminosity, so solar changes, but not geomagnetic. So far, not geomagnetic. And as as far as I'm aware, there is no, uh, I haven't seen any, any research conclusion on this. So I, I don't know if you mean luminosity or if you mean uh, uh, Magnetic things coming from uh, from the sun. I guess it's magnetic magnetism uh, linked to the sun. Um, so the answer is I don't know, and I suspect it's no. I haven't seen anything, but uh, to be honest with you, I don't really know. Okay, so if there is. If there isn't any uh, other question, we're going to wrap up from here. Um, but if there are other questions, do not hesitate. I'm still here to answer. Maybe um, one or two more questions. All right. Can you speak to your experience of how many days before you experience weather changes, before you experience symptoms? Hmm. Let me read that again. Can you speak to your experience of how many days before you experience weather changes, before you experience symptoms? So, for my experience, uh, uh, for my own experience, uh, it's it's immediate because because it's only when there is a high pressure change. And it's usually not a pressure change that you would find in a typical day. So, but um, from from what I read and, and from the research we've done in, in house, what we see is if you have a high pressure change, you will have symptoms immediately after the pressure change. So symptoms can be prodrome or aura symptoms. So the typical um, headache, uh, uh, symptoms can appear up to three days after, because aura and uh, aura and 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 and, and pro prodrome can be up to three days before the actual symptoms, headache symptoms. Then, second, if you're not highly sensitive, 
be careful of, uh, of these uh, high variation days because you might be uh, sensitive to other things such as stress or hormones or um, sleep, sleep disruption or perfumes or dietary, uh, dietary risk factors. So watch out for these ones, try to minimize them. And if you can uh, minimize them, then you might not be uh, as affected by weather because keep in mind that everything is piling up. So that's, I hope that I answered your question. That's about what I can tell you about it. And maybe the last question, I find it difficult to record migraine over multiple days. I found that I break them down into 24 hour migraines so I can better track meds and weather, etc. Do you have any other suggestions? So yes, I do. I would highly recommend you that you go to the uh, to the feature to insights. Sorry. So let me let me let me check that with you guys. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I would recommend two things. First one, you go to features and you go to migraine impact report. You download your migraine impact report and there you have all your days of migraine. So that's for you and, and for your doctor. Now, if you, uh, um, if you, if you want to, uh, to, to have a look at all the options for recording multiple days, then I would highly recommend you that you go to insights, programs, and you check out the program for chronic migraines. And there you will have all the tips for the different ways of recording multiple days attacks. Okay, so if I don't have any uh, other question, I think we're going to wrap up now. Ah, another one, last one. Is it possible to put the impact report on the front screen? I record in there frequently for the multiple days attacks. Mm. Okay, so I suggest in that case that you go to the impact report. There is a, there is a suggestion box in the impact report and you drop a message to, uh, to Jenny that uh, gets all our messages and then uh, reports back to the development team for future development and enhancement of the user experience. So this will be added to, uh, to, to, to this bucket. And then I have a last question, which is, is barometric pressure the same in all four seasons? So barometric, barometric pressure uh, changes all the time. Uh, if, you, if you ever have a look at TV on the, on the weather forecast, uh, they will show you, they will display these uh, very strange uh, maps over your country where you see these uh, different uh, concentric lines with, uh, um, with, with, the, with the pressure variation. And you will see that these, the, the, the pressure changes from one place to another. So except in very specific places, such as in the middle of the desert in Africa, the, the, the weather changes quite often, but it doesn't mean that it changes a lot. So what we see, uh, what we saw on these, uh, on these uh, 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 tropical areas with the, with the dark blue dots means that even though weather changes every day and, and maybe several times a day, the, um, it doesn't change often. It doesn't often changes a lot. And when I say a lot, remember what we, what we saw. Moderate change means 0.18 inches of mercury of maximum change over 24 hours. In metric, it's 6 millibar over 24 hours. And this is already significant. If you live in tropical areas, it doesn't happen often. It happens. It does, but not often. Only, only a few days per year, under 30 days per year. But if you live in Canada, for instance, in most parts of Canada or in most parts of the, of, of, of the northern part of the United States, then you will have many of these days. In Ireland, in Scandinavia as well. So 
the weather changes everywhere. The weather changes often everywhere, but in some places it doesn't change so much or it doesn't change so much. Or even if it does, there is not such a big pressure variation. So if you are, if you are, uh, um, if you are sensitive to big pressure changes and you live in Singapore, well, the difference between a storm and not a storm in Singapore doesn't, doesn't have the same dramatic, uh, uh, doesn't mean the same dramatic drops or rise in, uh, uh, in, in pressure as in the north of Canada. All right. Well, uh, thank you. Thank you very much to, uh, to all of you guys. Um, thank you very much for following this live stream. Do not forget to claim your discount code. And if an annual plan sounds like it's too much commitment at this point, you can also try MB Plus for free for seven days. So all the links can be found in our pinned comment as well as in the description box of this live stream. I wish you all a very nice weekend. Thank you very much. So we'll end up for now.